Okay, next I'm seeking a motion for approval of the agenda. Place forth a motion to approve the agenda as written. Support. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Mr. Roscoe. Yes. Mr. Williams, yes. Uh, Mr. Grunberg. Yes. Mrs. Rayford. No. Mrs. Richardson. Yes. Mrs. Grunberg. Yes. Is there a motion for consent agenda? Place forth the motion to uh, uh, approve the consent agenda in its written form. Is there support? Support. Discussion. Discussion. Um, an error in the minutes that needs to be corrected. I know I usually vote no on just about everything, but on the decision to send the representatives to MISD, I voted yes. And it's reflected in the resolution. So I'm not sure where the mistake was made. Was it mis was a mistake made on the vote? or in the resolution, because I had no objection to that. Are you guys willing to accept, uh, make that motion with that correction? Because she did vote yes on that. And I don't know, is in the minutes, I didn't notice that. Is it, is she listed as a no? You want to amend it? You want to amend it? In the minutes, you were listed as a no vote on that. Right. When you it were actually, been. you were actually, yes, I do yes. remember that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I believe I recall. I didn't catch that. Yes. That's, uh, so you guys willing to go ahead and make that motion with the correction to the minutes? Let's, mm -hmm. let's uh, make the motion uh, with, the, with the corrected minutes. Not support. Okay. Anything else on that? Okay, please call the vote. I think she had something. Oh, you had something else? I, I did. <laughs> right, right. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Kind of quickly there. Go ahead. Uh, just a question about the consistency in presentation because with some people mileage was paid with destination and some with just mileage is there a reason for that or should i be asking robert that that would be basically you're looking at some mileage reimbursements that people have gotten right mm -hmm. and it's listed a couple different ways you said yeah yeah that's a question you could okay pose to robert i would assume want to get an understanding All right. well she's she's probably going to forward you a question about the way something's presented okay good good i'm good okay please call the vote okay mr rasco yes mrs gruenberg yes mr gruenberg yes um mr williams yes Mrs. Rayford? No. And Mrs. Richardson? Well, we're talking about consent, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, next on the agenda, Superintendent's report, Superintendent Gibson. Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, present here in the audience and joining us online. Uh, this is the last week of school for students here at East Point Community Schools, but we do have some great celebrations this week. Our East Point High School uh, softball team won the district championships on June 2nd with a 16-0 shutout of South Lake and a 24-4 win over Denby. This is the first softball district title for the Shamrocks since 2011. Unfortunately, on Saturday, um, we did not um, move forward, but we do congratulate this uh, Shamrock softball team. All right. All right. So we'd like to thank all of our action teams who have been, oh, nice job, action team one with the number one. Uh, so I, we'd like to thank and share uh, with you all of the people who have committed to being part of the goal teams. Um, as you know, we have a new strategic plan that the board approved in January, and there are five goals in the strategic plan. Each one of those goals has an action team that has be, been created. They are a cross-section across the district, representing different levels of schools, um, and the teams have been meeting um, over the past three months. 
taking the goals of the action teams and developing key performance indicators for how we will measure the success of each of the areas as well as aligning the strategies and activities. So we'd like to thank all of the district staff who have been participating in the five goal teams um, for their hard work over the last three months unpacking those five goals of the strategic plan. Um, the union president and myself have been conducting lunch and learns across the district. Uh, we've been able to meet with staff and ask and hear more about their concerns, their hopes and dreams, and um, really wonderfully asking for resources and things that they need to do a better job guiding and teaching children in this community. We're very proud of all of our staff for taking the time to share with us their feedback. Um, congratulations to all of the students and the Board of Education who represented us in the Memorial Day Parade. I think our band, our marching band, was overwhelmed by the two-mile march, uh, but they did a fantastic job, as well as the Drama Club marching in the Memorial Day Parade. And we thank the parade organizers um, who had record attendance in parade participants this year. If you didn't get out to support the Memorial Day Parade this year, don't worry, you've got a chance uh, next year as we'll be doing it again. Congratulations to the class of 2023 who celebrated their commencement on June 1st. Um, it was a great ceremony, um, nice to experience the uh, air-conditioned environment at the Macomb County Community College South End Campus. Um, and we were so proud of our commencement speakers and all of our graduates. Congratulations again. Uh, East Point Cops Care basketball game was Friday night where the East Point Police Department um, started their own nonprofit group called East Point Cops Care. Um, and together in a partnership with a nonprofit group called Royalty Empowerment, East Point High School was able to have three athletes participate on, in the game. Um, the students did win the game, 59 to 28. Um, the cops looked great, and there were no uh, injuries or workers' comp claims for any of our police officers. It was a great night, um, one we hope of many, where uh, city officials, city leaders, um, students, families all came together to an, enjoy a night of basketball. So we're grateful to the East Point Police Department for the opportunity um, that they created, and they, they do want another challenge. Um, because they did lose to the students on Friday. So field days are occurring across the district at the Early Learning Center's field day. Uh, the fire truck was out and uh, bubbles were being made. More than 120 families came out to enjoy field day at our Early Learning Center. Thank you to all the staff at the Early Learning Center for making an amazing experience for students and families to participate in. A field day at Bellevue was also last week. Um, there was some brave staff members in a dunk tank, tons of games, lots of fun. Thank you, Bellevue, for creating this opportunity for our students. Um, field day at Pleasant View. Some of the pictures that we were provided from Pleasant View, the adults looked like they were having more fun than the children as exhibited by fifth grade teacher CT there, um, pulling on the tug of war rope. They also had a gaming truck that came and it was a reward for all of the students. So thank you Bellevue and Pleasant View for um, creating this opportunity for all of the kids. August 8th, we will be going to the members of this community um, to share information and a possibility for a bond for the school district. I'd like to take a moment and highlight the proposed projects at each of the schools. Um, it is a no tax rate increase bond proposal. Absentee ballots will be available after June 29th. And election day is Tuesday, August 8th. Um, it is a no tax rate increase because we have some mills falling off. We would be asking our voters to renew these, which would infuse $36.4 million into the district to enhance safety and security, update and renovate the Early Learning Center. Um, and here we'll highlight 
Uh, big things for the work at the Early Learning Center would be exterior lighting, emergency communication systems, an expanded parking and paving area. If you've ever been on David at the end of the day, there is a significant traffic jam due to the traffic for um, school release. We would also be looking at enhancing the learning environment in the playground surfaces, upgrading our playground equipment, um, improving the drainage around the early learning center. Um, in the spring, in heavy rains, uh, we call it the lake, David, there. Um, we would also be working to increase the network infrastructure, replacing staff and student computing devices would be across the district, a new sound system for their gymnasium, and some select furniture and equipment. We'll also be working on the mechanical system to add air conditioning. And many of you observant folks might notice that we were hoping to do air conditioning with the sinking fund dollars. That was work we were intending to do this summer. However, due to electrical component shortages, not the units, but the work that was needed for the electrical infrastructure, we were unable to get that done in our sinking fund um, time period. So we will be adding the air conditioning to this bond. Also be doing some roofing repairs, some select masonry, um, and pump work. When we look at Crescentwood Elementary School, a lot of the information will be the same. Um, and here on the bottom, you can see we would again be doing playgrounds and surface areas. We would be looking to refinish the wood gym floor at Crescentwood, improving the water bottle fill stations, um, and also doing the gym sound system. Um, also replacing the um, directional signage and looking at improving the pathways and paving lot structures at Crescentwood. Um, for those families that drop off at Crescentwood, you know it's a dead end street and uh, there is a loop there. We would be also trying to work with the city of Warren to create a one-way pathway to improve traffic flow at Crescentwood Elementary School. Extending out to Eastwood Avenue provided that we can pull all of the accurate permits for that work. Our work at Forest Park Elementary School would involve the wood soffits above classroom doors, exterior lighting, camera upgrades, emergency communication systems, parking lots, sidewalks, and curbs, um, also reconfiguring parking lots. Again, our schools were built when most of the students were walkers. Um, they are not handed, they are not equipped for large amounts of car traffic and instead create unsafe situations in our communities with children darting across trying to get to parents. We would like to improve the paved and parking areas also at Forest Park, which we think would make it safer for parent pickup. We'd also be looking at replacing the play pad um, paving area. Additionally, playground surfaces and playground equipments, upgrading the play field, replacing bleachers, benches, and fencing, um, upgrading the network infrastructure, replacing student and staff computing devices, the gym sound system, and some select equipment and furniture. The facility improvements for Forest Park would be the mechanical systems to add air conditioning, select areas of roofing, select brick and masonry work, a masonry work in the boys' restroom, updating classroom restrooms, um, we did do a number of restrooms across the district for the larger restrooms. We do have smaller classroom restrooms that need to be um, improved. We would also be looking at sinks and faucets, water bottle fill stations, um, replacing galvanized water piping and a domestic water heater, as well as electrical panels around the building. Bellevue Elementary School, we would be looking at a lot of the same work, lighting, cameras, emergency communication systems, parking lot paving, sidewalks and curbs, uh, replacing the play pad paving, replacing crosswalk pads, adding a bus lane along Phlox Avenue, expanding the parking lot, replacing the playground surfaces, playground equipment, updating the play fields, updating the in network infrastructure, replacing student and staff computing devices, refinishing the gym wood floor, replacing display cases, as well as the gym sound system and other select furniture and equipment. The facility improvements would again be the mechanical system for air conditioning, 
some roof, some brickwork, some ceiling tiles, uh, sinks and faucets in restrooms, adding a water bottle fill station, replacing galvanized water piping, replacing plumbing fixtures, and updating electrical panels. At Pleasant View Elementary School, we again will be working on safety and security updates and improvements, exterior lighting, cameras, emergency communication system, paving, sidewalks, and curbs, concrete walk at the egress doors, as well as adding a bus lane. The learning environment improvements would be playground surfaces, playground equipment, the play field, network infrastructure, student and staff computing, the gym floor being refinished, new gym sound system, purchase of select furniture and equipment. And the facility improvements will sound a lot like our three other elementary schools, but they will have mechanical system for air conditioning, replacing the um, select roofing, select brickwork, updating classroom restrooms, replacing hot water heater and circulation pump, replacing sinks and faucets, adding water bottle fill stations, replacing galvanized piping, replacing plumbing fixtures, and upgrading all electrical panels. Next, for the East Point Middle School, we have held off on doing work at the middle school and the high school, as these are two large campuses. Um, the security and safety improvements for the middle school will upgrade door locks, create a secure entry vestibule, add interior corridors, uh, corridor doors for security, upgrade exterior lighting, upgrade cameras, emergency communication systems. We would be replacing some select concrete sidewalks, adding visitor parking by the secure entry location. The learning environment improvements would be the gym sound system, the network infrastructure, replace student and staff computing devices, purchase select furniture and equipment, add a basketball court for physical education, add outdoor equipment for physical education, and the facility improvements would be replacing select roofing, improving drainage around the back of the building. For East Point High School, for security and safety, we would be upgrading door locks, creating a secure entry vestibule, upgrading exterior lighting, cameras, emergency communications, and paving. The learning environment improvements, our primary area of focus would be the culinary arts space, uh, the gym sound system, network infrastructure, student and staff computers, furniture and equipment. We will be resurfacing the track removing the obsolete tennis courts and improving the football and soccer practice field areas. The other facility improvements will be select roofing, renovation of restrooms, replacing the boiler system, replacing air conditioning chiller, upgrading the pool equipment and bringing it back online. And we would be demoing the West End portion of the school. It is an old, um, the addition of the high school where the roof needs a substantial amount of work. So next up, I'd like to invite um, gentlemen, former alumni of East Detroit um, High School, John Olinsky, Justin Gamola, and Matt Morissette up to the podium here. Um, the Hillside Foundation added scholarships on at the end of the year and has requested to have this time. Next year, their scholarships, should they choose to continue them, will be handled through the high school and shared out with um, all of the other amazing scholarship um, funders. But this evening, we'd like to give them an opportunity to present their scholarships to the students. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your generosity of your time and your uh, financial contributions.
I, it does not go unnoticed uh, that you do like the big checks and uh, we, we, we appreciate your time, John, Justin and Matt this evening. Thank you very much for all you've done for this community and we look forward to continuing to do great things together. Thank you so much. Um, upcoming events here in the school district and in the community. Uh, June 16th is the last day of school. It is a half day for students. June 16th, 17th, and 18th is the Gratiot Cruise. Um, June 19th begins the East Point High School Summer Credit Recovery Program. Just a reminder to other districts that uh, if your district isn't offering credit recovery, ours is. Um, we do get a number of external candidates for the credit recovery program, and we would love to have you come and participate in ours. Registration remains open for high school students looking to complete credit requirements over the summer. June 20th is the kickoff for the Boys and Girls Club programming. After checking in with the Boys and Girls Club, they already have 86 uh, full-time club participants. We're excited to see them launch their summer programming. June 29th is a Gleaners food distribution at East Point Middle School, 9.30 a.m. July 10th begins East Point Community School's summer program. Um, we do have a waiting list. If you would like to have your family or your students added to the list, we would love to have you. Um, and then next, July 10th through 13th, the Boys and Girls Club will be hosting a Detroit Pistons basketball camp at East Point High School. Please contact Boys and Girls Club for registration and more information. That concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you. Okay, next we have a hearing of the public. We'll open that up at 6.57. Does anyone wish to be heard? Anyone wish to be heard? Please state your name for the record, and you have three minutes. I suppose you need to turn these things on. It's now. So I want to first say I am not a typical note person. I'm a stream of consciousness speaker. Uh, but I did make a few notes. But before I go on, because my three minutes are very valuable, I want to put a thought out or some good wishes to a local resident. His name is Harvey Creech. Mr. Creech is as big of an advocate for the city of East Point as anybody I've ever met. You might not agree with him. You might agree with him. But nobody has more passion than Mr. Creech. He gives back in many ways. He opens dialogue. And that is probably the crux of why I'm speaking tonight. We need more dialogue. I want to see all of you folks get into it. I want to see discussion. I'm on the planning commission. Our meetings start at 7 o'clock, and they go till whenever. I looked at the website. You've allocated one hour. You guys should be speaking for hours. You guys should be digging into things, finding ways to help teachers, finding ways to help students. There needs to be more dialogue. You know, I, I admit that the apathy within the community has probably stunted a lot of what's happened over the last 20 years. People don't get involved. Short of Mr. Zander, who's here, probably every meeting. Uh, and I pass him every morning after I leave breakfast at 6 a.m. Um, but there's not enough involvement. And I wrote a letter last year, because I'm actually busy, but this is my quiet time where I can speak. And it was not read into the record, because that was a decision. Last week, the second hearing of the public was removed. But yet we're going to ask people to vote for a renewal of a bond. But yet we're taking away that additional three minutes to speak. So I went through the bylaws. And might I say the website needs some updates. In the policy section under the board, it still has people that are not members of the board on it listed. Um, Article 8, Section 3, Community Relations. Community input. The board welcomes input from community members at board meetings or as other appropriate times. The board believes that community involvement in the affairs of the district is essential and valuable and will endeavor to provide reliable and efficient ways to permit public input to the decision-making process. By simply taking away that second hearing of the public, the majority of you all violated your bylaws. 
You have got to speak. People have the rights to be heard. And I understand, you know, if you watch social media in the city of East Point, you know that there is this unwritten war with uh, Trustee Rayford because she speaks. And I will fully admit, I am a friend of Ms. Rayford's. And I can tell you right now, I have called her out many times. Uh, I believe I still have another minute, sir. All right. Thank I mean, you. I'm not cutting you off. All right. Yes. So as I was saying, I have called out Ms. Rayford to her face. And if you wish to raise your hand to get, verify that I have, in fact, called you out for some of the things that you've said and some of the actions that you've done. She is another Harvey Creech. She holds people's feet to the fire. If you don't like having your feet held to the fire, get out of the kitchen. Hello, uh, my name is Eric Sarisa. I'm assistant principal at the high school. Um, I will do my best to keep this under three minutes. But at the end of this very eventful year, I felt like I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't speak to you about some of the things that have happened. Um, so there's a couple of things that I want to say. And the first one is, frankly, a thank you. I have worked in this district since 2004. Uh, as a teacher, as dean of students, and then as assistant principal at the high school. I think everybody who goes into education really wants to help people, and I feel like I have helped quite a lot of people over the last 19 years in this district. I've heard from a lot of them. I've heard from a lot of former students who thanked me. I've heard from uh, a lot of parents. I've heard from a lot of staff members who thanked me, who've worked with me and seen the job I've done every day, and, um, and thanked me for it. So I want to thank you guys for the opportunity I've had working over the last 19 years. Um, I have had occasion recently to go over my, uh, my personnel record. And for 18 out of those 19 years, I had uh, entirely positive uh, evaluations and nothing but commendations in my personnel record. So um, thank you for that. The other thing that I felt I really needed to say was an explanation for why I have resigned my position as uh, assistant principal at East Point High School. And the first thing I want to say about that is I have every confidence that if you had heard all of the facts, you would have done the right thing. You would have renewed my, uh, my contract. Uh, I was ready to move forward with that, with a hearing with you. Um, but then I considered the work environment that has developed over the last year. I considered the fact that it's a work environment where I don't feel that I can be successful, where I don't feel like I can do everything that I want to in the best interest of students, where I don't feel like I'm allowed to, and I don't feel like anyone would be allowed to. And I decided I had no interest in returning to that work environment. So why would I? And I do want to specify this is not because of the students or the staff at East Point High School. This is not because of Mrs. Jones or Ms. Thompson, who are two administrators that I esteem very highly. Um, ultimately, after 19 years working towards this position, uh, I made the, cho the choice to resign from the position of East Point High School assistant principal because I needed to escape a situation that had become intolerable. I hope that moving forward, you'll think about that. If any of you would like to speak to me further about my experience, I am at your service. Thank you. Hello, board. Um, Gary Myron, East Point resident. Graduated from East Detroit. Went to Oakwood, so been around. Uh, hearing of the public, taking away the second one. Sounds like you don't want to hear what the public has to say. <clears throat> I always like to hear what the public has to say. I always like to hear your comments and any other comments from any other meetings that I go to. Um, I think it should be probably thought about, you know, to hear both sides. I like to hear both sides. Um, people at the end of the meetings like to put their little comments. Um, to me, you're just taking that away. Um, the high school teachers did a good job. We got good students coming out. Um, I graduated in the 70s, 73. 
Um, we had wood shop. We had auto mechanics. We had a small engine repair. A lot of that, you know, I took wood shop. I even had wood shop in Oakwood. Um, I had auto mechanics and wood shop in East Detroit. Learned a lot from that. That helped me as I left the school, continued on in life, and I like to do what I do. I work on cars. I know a little bit about it. A lot of people don't even know how to change a tire. I think some of that would be nice to come back or do robots. Lincoln High School used to do a, a auto repair. So I knew people there, and that's how I learned some auto repair, body work. Um, that would be nice. I mean, the auto companies, or the repair companies, the collision shops are hurting for people because the schools are not teaching them stuff. You know, just give them a little heads up on how things are done and give them a little you know, a start in life on, oh, yeah, I do like this. When I leave, I'll continue on, and that helps out. I wish the high school would do that. And because that helped, that would help out a lot of people, you know, continue on and try different things. I don't know if it was a state thing or the school thing, but I, you know, that's my main thing was, you know, taking away a lot of things out of the high school, but I don't know if it's, you know, other states have different things. They get into robotics and stuff like that. That way, you, I don't know, just a thought. Hope to think about it. Thank you. Could you please restate your name? Just for the record. Gary Myron. Gary Myron. Thank you yep. so much, Gary Myron. Sure. Anyone else wish to be heard? Yes, sir. And your name is? Good evening, Lincoln Stocks President EFE. Um, I want to do a couple things. First off, I wanted to just draw attention to the simple fact that we brought graduates back, alumni back that brought something to our community. So many times we read on uh, the social media, you know, the, the split opinions on where we're at and what, how our alumni feel. But to see those guys come back was really a phenomenal um, gift to, to bring to our community and how excited it is to see that they're adding into our, uh, our, our future, not just remembering what it was in the past. So it's really a great thing to see. Um, I wanted to take a second to um, congratulate the people we're here to honor to this evening. The uh, Federation is so pleased to be able to celebrate the, you know, the retirement of so many wonderful educators and to see how the kids and the community have responded to some of them as they've made their announcements over the uh, last couple of days on Facebook or other types of social media is really a wonderful experience. Um, Mr. Myron, if you know any tradesmen that want to learn to teach high school, you just let us know because you're right. It was a state issue to cut a lot of that stuff, and now it's a staffing issue to, to be able to put it back in. So those are some wonderful ideas. Uh, my son's a carpenter, and I can't get him to come and teach anybody anything other than, than go to work every day. Um, so just a few things like that I wanted to bring attention and congratulate the the graduates from the class of 2023 and encourage those kids that are coming back next year and those that are coming to us for the first time to bring with them that work ethic and see if we can't move forward in, in building a better uh, future for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Anyone else wish to be heard? Seeing none, close the hearing of the public at 708. Next we have recognition of the retirees. I think the board, we all kind of normally stand down in front of here. Oh, you want to go Good evening. I know. All right, good evening. Tonight we are recognizing the fo following individuals for their retirement from East Point Community Schools. <laughs> Lori Hillebrand, Lisa Kopitz, Elaine Axe, Suzanne Toth, Richard McDonald, Sandra Young, and Julie Kaler. It is, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. It is with immense gratitude that we gather today to honor and celebrate each one of you as we reflect upon the incredible contributions you've made to East Point Community Schools, we are filled with profound admiration and appreciation. 
You, you dedicated your careers to nurturing young minds, molding the future generation, and shaping society with wisdom, knowledge, and compassion. The impact that you have had on the lives of your students is immeasurable. You've instilled in them the love for learning, guided them through challenges, and inspired them to reach for their dreams. In your classrooms and buildings, you created an environment where curiosity flourished, where every question was welcomed, and students felt seen and valued. Your patience, dedication, and unwavering belief in their potential have left an indelible mark on their hearts and minds. Beyond academics, you taught invaluable life lessons that extended far beyond the confines of a textbook. You taught the importance of kindness, empathy, resilience, and the power of perseverance. Your commitment to student growth extended beyond the classroom as you were always there to lend a listening ear, offer guidance, and provide the support your students needed. Today, as we look back on those cherished memories, we want to express our deepest gratitude for the legacy you are leaving behind. Your passion for education and influence has inspired so many of your students and colleagues to carry forward the work towards continued growth and success. Retirement may mark the end of your formal educational careers, but it certainly will not change the impact you have had on the world. Your legacy lives on through the countless lives you have touched, the countless minds you have shaped, and the countless, countless hearts you have transformed. On behalf of all the students whose lives you have touched and the staff with whom you have worked alongside, we extend our deepest gratitude and admiration. We wish you all the very best in this new chapter of your lives. May it be filled with joy, relaxation, and fulfillment. May you continue to find new adventures, pursue your passions, and revel in the well-deserved rewards of a lifetime of service. Once again, thank you for the profound impact you have had on East Point Community Schools. We are forever grateful for the knowledge, wisdom, and time that you have shared with us. At this time, when I call your name, please come up to accept your bell, commemorating your service to our district. If you'd like to say a few words, I will happily give you the mic. Ready? All right. We're going to start with Lori Hillebrand. Thank you so much for your 32 years of service, ending with principal at Pleasant View Elementary. Yeah, you can come speak if you, you want. No, you're good. A few you words? Go work the room. No? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Lori, if you'll stay up at the front, please, and thank you. Thank you. Elaine X, 25 years of service. No. <laughs> no? Thank you, Elaine. Sandra Young, 28 years of service. Julie Kaler, 35 years of service. Okay. Right. Lisa Kopitz, 26 years of service. Lisa is not here this evening, and we will be getting her her bell. Suzanne Toth, 32 years of service. Same. And then Richard McDonald, 25 years of service. We will be getting him his bell. All right, so then the tradition is that you guys all ring your bell. <laughs> so if you would just wait for Caitlin, who will get up and take a big group picture of you guys, and then the bell, we can, you can do your ceremonial ring. All right, ring it in for us. All right. One, One two. two. Uh, thank you guys all so much. Congratulations. There are refreshments outside for afterward.
Okay, next on the agenda, discussion action. Curriculum. MHSAA 2023-2024 membership resolution. Well, this is, is our annual. Yeah. member uh, yeah. For new members of the board, this is an annual resolution that we take to be part of the Michigan High School Sports Association. Um, so this is our annual membership resolution to be members in MHSS, F MHSAA. Okay, I'll make, I'd move that we approve the MHSAA membership resolution as presented. Support. Uh, the only thing I got to say is, while I don't necessarily agree with, abs agree with absolutely every single rule that they have, and I'm sure people will debate several different rules that they may have, uh, this is important for our students because if not, uh, those girls that were up there as district champs would not be up there as district champs because they would not be eligible to participate. So that's why it's important that we adopt this resolution. Well, MHSA it is covers, Michigan State High School Association. Yep, it covers the high school and then some limited participation of our middle school as well. Yeah, because they do segregate as far as which grades can compete against which grades and that type of thing as well too. So, but yes, but our students would not be able to participate in MHSA sponsored events such as districts, regional states, and things like that. Some of the other functions. Does anybody else have anything they want to add to it? Please call the vote. was me and then I think Mr. Roscoe right mm -hmm. yes 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 okay next we have <coughs> curriculum adoption my perspectives who's handling that uh, good evening. I uh, would invite Lisa Petrella up to the podium to share more about the adoption process. Good evening, members of the board and Hosting schools. I'm here tonight to present two second year curriculum proposals for ELA grades 6 through 12 and math grades 9 through 12, and also to provide an end of the year summary on our benchmark assessment data. Uh, the timeline and the professional development that will hopefully follow uh, 
standard aligned material uh, that teachers can implement, implement with fidelity. We also know um, that as our <coughs> valuable veterans retire, we have an influx of new teachers. Sometimes it varies level up to dental. So we, we know that we need uh, something Lisa, could you please turn your microphone on? There's a green button at the bottom of the stem. There's a small gray button. And a green button. Maybe that's why it was off. Turn it off and we'll readjust the volume. Caitlin, you may want to turn the volume down no. on the presentation. Uh, turn the volume down on that microphone and let us know when to turn it back on, please. There we go. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes? All right, so current programming. Um, grades 6 through 8 have an old resource. Grades 9 through 12 in ELA uh, teachers have been using some select novels um, and some teacher-created activities. Um, but again, no, um, there's a need for a new resource. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Our, in our math classes, Algebra, Geometry, and Algebra 2, um, there's a lot of teacher-created units, no textbooks really being used. So again, just stating our why and the need. The first step in this curriculum adoption process was to survey all of our teachers of ELA and math at those grade levels. Our ELA survey results uh, told us that 86% 80 of our teachers were not satisfied with the current resources, and they cited the areas that were lacking, um, things like the online textbook and the resources, guided lessons for instructions, Al alignment to grade level standards, texts that students can see themselves in, um, which speaks to that diversity, equity, and inclusion piece. Um, we need texts that, that really are windows and mirrors for our students where they can see themselves reflected in the text, but it also uh, the windows to help broaden their horizons and give them a view to the world outside of East Point Community Schools. Next slide. Um, you can see that from this survey, the top areas that we knew we needed to address um, and the teachers agreed were, were the student engagement piece, the ease of use with the materials, and then of course tech integration, rigor, and um, interventions were equally important to our staff. For math, we also surveyed uh, that department. At the high school, 75% of the respondents reported that the current math resources were not effective in increasing student achievement. Um, again, the areas that they cited that were lacking or um, areas that there was a need were the online textbook and activities, activities that uh, support mathematical discourse where the students are talking about math and using a math mindset. Accessibility for all students, scaffold approach uh, to topics, digital math tools, and something that's aligned with the Common Core. On the next slide, you'll see that again, ease of use uh, was important to our math department. That tech integration, especially coming off of a pandemic and hybrid instruction, uh, there was a realization that, that math is a really hard subject to teach, uh, and there, there were some resources that were lacking in this uh, digital world. The survey data also gave us input on who wanted to be part of an adoption team and which teachers would like to pilot some lessons. So we then were able to create two teams, which included veteran and new teachers, instructional coaches, principals, and of course our central office team. We were able to hold meetings, to um, several meetings actually, over the course of a, a couple of months. 
we were able to identify resources and in order for a resource to even be selected, it had to have all green on ed reports. Um, and then we had vendor presentations. We, we had meetings to debrief and to, come, to try to come to con consensus on a resource. We piloted lessons from two resources and, and we did some reference checks. Teachers were very excited to be part of the team and, and, and to have their, their voices heard um, and to, to, to play a role in this selection of these new resources. As I said, the references and the professional development were, were very important to us. Knowing that much support is needed as we implement new resources and as we help um, lift up some of our inexperienced and new instructors, we, we determined that Savas Learning Resources uh, best meet our district's needs. So tonight, you're going to hear me actually um, recommend to you my perspectives for ELA grades six through 12 and envision mathematics for algebra, algebra, geometry, and algebra two. Sorry. All right, next slide. We're going to quickly go through ELA. So there's some highlights to this program. Uh, there are there's whole class, small group, and independent learning at each unit. Uh, has essential questions. There's opportunities for students to do some close reading. There's vocabulary, grammar, and all of those other pieces that you would expect in a comprehensive English language arts uh, resource. Um, things like mentor texts and, and uh, a great assessment package, which is very important uh, to the curriculum department, as, as well as I'm sure our, our teachers and staff. Um, there's there's also some job embedded professional development that we will offer to our staff once this is adopted, which means we have uh, our partners at Savas Learning who will come in and, and provide that professional development and that coaching to staff um, over the, the course of this adoption. This one-time purchase is going to include teacher's guides, both hardcover and digital for our teachers, um, student textbooks will have class sets of hardcover books and then each student will have digital access to that text. We have some consumable uh, workbooks for students, which again um, are great for close reading. They can highlight, they can, they can write, mark up the text. Um, they can do their quick writes and, and different things right there in the margin of that text. Um, we'll also have digital licenses to Savas Realize. A revision assistant, if you've ever been an ELA teacher, that's a, that's a pretty amazing tool. It's going to be a, a digital component where, where um, it provides feedback to students when they, when they do writing. And then a, that amazing PD package that I, that I mentioned before. Next slide. At this point, I would ask, um, would you like me to go ahead and talk about the math? Or do we, do, would you like me to pause? or continue. For math, our resource, again, is this Envision Mathematics for Algebra, Geometry, and Algebra 2. Um, again, it's through Savas Learning Company. And what we really liked about, about this uh, resource is, you remember me being here, uh, I believe it was December or November, and we talked about uh, a K-8 adoption of iReady. And what we like is there's some common language with this high school resource that really you know, over a period of years, the kids will, will be quite familiar with this, uh, with a lot of this discourse piece. Um, the way that the uh, units and the lessons are set up, are, there's some similarities. So each lesson begins with an exploration, then there's guided instruction, understand and, and apply. There are these amazing uh, videos called virtual, virtual nerd videos, um, which, which are so helpful for students who, um, can, they can watch them at home, they can watch them on their own. 
Um, they're very, very kid-friendly and user-friendly. There's three-act math modeling, uh, which gives kids that real-life connection. Um, I'm sure you've heard uh, the question, what, is, what do I need to know this for? What's this math going to be useful for in the future? Well, these models are going to help kids answer those questions. Um, there's family engagement components. And there's also, actually, I should have mentioned this for ELA as well, there's an offline access um, that the students can work when they're offline, and then it syncs back up when the student uh, returns and has, uh, and has access to, to the internet. internet. Same package uh, that we would be purchasing. The classroom materials would be the student consumable workbooks, which are great for problem solving. The uh, classroom set of hardcover texts, teacher's editions, both digital and hard copy. Um, and again, um, students have the digital access to, to the workbooks. Scaffolded student support, differentiated instruction, and built-in remediation. And then, of course, this great assessment package that has uh, beginning, middle, and end benchmark assessments and progress monitoring throughout, as well as that, um, that professional development piece. So we really believe, our, our team believes, a focus on tier one core instruction in both English language arts and math while using more up-to-date curriculum resources are going to enable us to better monitor student growth and needs our teaching staff will continue to enhance their craft through quality professional development and provide engaging lessons to our students. Solid foundation of these, these two core areas will assist us in our journey to rapidly increase student achievement and reach our strategic planning goals. The next steps for us would be uh, tonight, we we're going to bring uh, bring this proposal to you to vote on. Uh, we would like to have materials ordered by July 1st, and this is kind of an aggressive timeline, but we want to have full and complete implementation for the fall so that we can hit the ground running when students return to us in, in just a few short months. So the materials will be delivered to teachers. We have, uh, a, we're gonna kick off with some um, professional development, a half day of PD, and then that ongoing PD throughout the implementation. Um, and then of course we have our PLCs and our quarterly pacing meetings and, and we'll have, we'll kind of map those things out over the course of implementation. And I will pause now before talking about benchmark assessment. You ready to vote for this now is so I have some questions Did the teachers or the ones going to use this material have they had opportunity to look through it and examine absolutely okay. there were teachers on both of the curriculum adoption committees okay and we had a very short pilot in which they were able to teach lessons from each resource that we were looking at okay Second of all, yeah. is there anything that I can put my hands on that I can see or go through as an ELA teacher? Is you know I'm just looking at what is tangible that is going to work with the students, well, or do I, I have to come with you? I would have loved to have had you on my committee. I would have I wish brought I you had on the been team. Also, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had um, been also. We have we have many many resources that we could could share with you, but I, I, I don't think if we're voting tonight that, but I, but I welcome you to, to come join me okay. and we would share. Okay. Yeah, so, but the thing, things, what I'm sure. asking is this is something we're getting ready to vote on mm -hmm. to say yay or nay and the fact that how many of your ELA teachers had the opportunity to look did you have more than just or you just agreed or, or so in our curriculum adoption process it in it requires the process that we have a, internally as a district is that there is representation from all of the teacher groups and so there was a team of high school teachers that were invited to come and participate as well as a team of middle school teachers um, that came and the group met a series of different times with a right. number of different vendors and they winnowed down the pool of resources so teachers 
our practice in East Point is that teachers are an integral part of what we are doing and adopting. Now, all of the committee may not always agree. You know, there'll always be one person that wants one piece, or, or there are bits and pieces from different components. But what Lisa and the curriculum department are bringing forward to the board tonight is the platforms that they felt had the best comprehensive approach to this. That's, and that's what, what I needed really to know. what we loved and what the team has presented and brought to. So then the curriculum department, before they come here before the Board of Education, they have to come and meet with the executive cabinet. And we grill them. That's, so that's myself, Stephanie Fleming, Robert Carlesso, and Lori Rush. And we grill Lisa, and Donna came as a resource and a support. And we ask all the questions that you're asking because <coughs> our internal process has a committee of teachers yes. and then that committee makes a recommendation to the cabinet. The cabinet says, yes, we can support this and then, then we add it to the board agenda. So as a former teacher, I know, Mrs. Richardson, you would love to get your hands on Well, this. I just wanted to know the process yep. because I'm, I'm, I'm just coming and just saying yes and no for something that I'm not aware of or right. what has happened, it bothers me. And I just wanted to know, did you go through the process? Did you look at more than one, more than this perspective? And you came down and narrowed it down yes. to something that the teachers could agree on and was willing to work it. Absolutely. Yes. And is there a limit or time? Is that for how long is this material going to be? So we are looking at a five year implementation of this program um, and that would be what our recommendation to the Board of Education would be this evening. Is there a point where you stop and re revitalize and look again, see how well it's working before you get to the five year or is this just so straight five years? This recommendation from the curriculum department this evening would be for a five year. We figure it will take a year to implement you know, correctly and get everybody up to par. But what um, the curriculum department loved about Savas is the professional development. They also loved the companies, and this is a tribute to Lakeisha Flowers, who is a representative from the company here this evening. And Lakeisha has been in this work for 12, 13 years now, I think. Going into 11. Oh, yeah, going into 11. I was close. I was so close. <laughs> but what, what the team loved is that they pick up the phone and they get answers. With some of the other companies that we've tried to work with, we call, we don't get answers quickly. So that's why one of many reasons why the curriculum department is bringing forward the My Perspectives for ELA 612. Well, that's what Absolutely. I wanted to know because I, I just can't keep voting on something that I'm not aware of. So I just wanted to know those answers. What other questions might you have? No, I gave you the, I wanted to right. know, was there a, you know, a number of you went through and then you decided that the mm -hmm. teachers say they agree with it, want to work with it, and the time limit? Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I have uh, similar concerns. Uh, back in January, when we uh, voted to approve the iReady program, I think I asked at that time, would it be possible before the end of the year that we could have a presentation by the students so that they could really show us what they learned from the program. Right, I um, remember that. We've often done this and um, approved curriculum, the payment, um, and I really want to see what's being taught. Um, because when I look at, I think, the reading program or the English Language arts was, was, was that one 315,000? Mm -hmm. uh, so it was almost close to 600,000 for both, if I'm remembering the numbers correctly. Um, I think we, need, we have a responsibility to make wise decisions when it comes to curriculum. Absolutely. Um, and I can't realistically continue to do what has been done without seeing the possibility of that achievement that we need so badly. So for that reason, I'm, I'm not comfortable voting on this tonight. I'd really like to see, have an opportunity to look at the materials, uh, and then I could vote wisely. But until then, I don't think I could do that. Uh, and, and I will say, you're going to see the assessment data next, but I will say that 
once you see the assessment data, you, you will understand why this is an urgent situation to, to try and get some, some really high quality materials in the hands of our, of our teachers for our students. Yeah. And I can agree with that, Ms. Petrola, but, um, but you said, I think I saw the notice up that you'd like to order this by July 1st? That was our hope. Okay. So if we were to, for those of us who are interested, could come and look at the material, the next board meeting is the 26th, you would still <coughs> have an opportunity to order it by July 1st. That's what I'd like to see. What other questions might the board have for Lisa Petrella about the My Perspectives adoption or the Envision Math? <clears throat> What impact would it have if we did put this off for one meeting because our next meeting is not until the 26th, right? Because I'm concerned about the timing and the fact that it puts you behind the eight ball, to be quite honest with you. And, and I, we used to operate that way all the time. And we haven't for quite some time, and I don't want to start now, to be quite honest with you. Right. And, and the bottom so line I want is to know the we, we impact. haven't had any resources. I, mean, for, I, I for saw your timeline, time. and it looks like it's a pretty tight timeline. It's a anyhow. tight timeline, and it's not and just a matter of getting the materials. you say in your presentation that you hope to be prepared, right. you hope to be able to kick this off at the beginning of the school year. There's, there's digital integrations that have to happen, too, for, the, for that, and those do take... Those, those do take a lot of time. Now, I, I, so I do want really to bring up the fact that late, later on in the meeting, if you look further on down on the agenda, there's a forma formation of board uh, education committees. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll bring it up now, but I was going to bring it up then. Is uh, Macomb Intermediate School District has a, a class this summer, that, and I was going to encourage all my board members to go to it for committee structure. Okay, um, at the Macomb ISD this summer. And the reason I was going to bring it up then is because I think I want to revisit our committee structure because of situations exactly like this, okay? Because we used to at one time back when I was on the board early on, we had several committees. And one of them was a curriculum committee where when you guys had something you were going to bring to the board, before it was brought to the board, it was brought to that committee and they were had the opportunity it's maybe not the best choice of words to beat it up and at the committee level first before bringing it to the board ask all the questions get all the insight and get all the background on the information see touch the books the disc and all those things we used to do that okay and we haven't done that quite for some for quite some time and it's no fault of this administration it's actually I'll, I'll place blame on previous boards <clears throat> and eliminating the committee structure the way we did okay which was not necessarily a good thing. So that's why I was going to encourage everybody, and as I'm hearing you talk about these things, I'm thinking about the questions you're asking are similar to questions to what we used to ask in the committee. You know, once they got it to this far, and quite often the committees met before the board meetings and whatnot. So that's why I was going to bring that up then, is that as many of us participate in that committee structure professional learning that's made available for, by MSB this summer so that shortly thereafter we can have a workshop with all of us and determine the committee structure that we want to have as a board. I mean, do we want to, because I know MASB suggests four committees and you have the ability to run everything that comes through administration and through those committees. But that's why, I, you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to, I'm starting to get a little ahead of the game. But based on the questions you're asking, it just makes me think of that. <clears throat> you understand where I'm coming from, though, right? And you think that would be better to have something like that? Well, and, and that's my concern at this point is because based upon your description, the way that I perceive this is, is that the vehicle that we had 
and that we were using in this endeavor is old, and I, I don't like to say old, but outdated. I uh, mean, not functioning the way that we needed to based upon the road ahead that we have and the new road ahead that we have based upon how education has changed over the years. So I'm looking at the fact that here we have an outdated vehicle trying to go down the road with it, and we've gotten as far as we can with it, and now at some point, <clears throat> now the road has changed ahead of us, and we really need to get a newer vehicle that can adapt to the road that is ahead of us. And that's the way that I view, based upon your description up there, that's what I viewed it that, as. That is the case with the ELA curriculum, is that our current curriculum is no longer um, being supported. Um, right. With math, we didn't even have a car. We had teacher-created well, materials. I didn't want to go that far. <laughs> There's no uh, yeah, let's, being utilized. Okay, I was trying. I was trying to be a little more diplomatic. And, and we, could... somebody else say something? Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I'm newer to the board, and let me tell you, the way I look at it is, I'd like to make the motion to accept them both right now because, you know, that's not our job to micromanage you. It's not. You know we're. We're here, we hired Christy, she hired you guys, you guys are a team, so we have to trust that, and that's the way I look at it. It's not my job to micromanage you. So I would like to make a motion, whether it goes or not for tonight, to adopt both curriculums, my perspectives, ELA, grade six through 12, we doing them separate or together? You move. And then Envision the Math, grades nine through 12. Is there I don't want her to be behind. I'm going to support that. While we have our, our rep here, I, that would be a question that I think she would have, she could maybe help me to answer. Um, and again, I just wanna, I, I wanna be very clear. It's not about me, it's not about making it convenient for me. It's about what's doing what's best for, for the kids and, and for the teachers so that we can really hit the ground running in the fall. Okay, do, do we have motion and support? So yeah, have motion and support on the floor. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, the person who made the motion, do you okay. have any further thing, anything you want to add? No. Nope. Support, do you want to add anything? Nope. Okay. Um, any, anybody else? No, I have one comment. Okay. Um, it is my understanding, being a board member, we have to be accountable, responsible for the funds we spend. And I'm not saying that I don't want to see the program. I want to see our kids succeed at the highest level they possibly can. But at the same time, we must make wise decisions spending money. The money we may have now, we may not have later. And all I'm asking is let's make a wise decision. It's not about micromanaging. It's about being careful of the budget that we have. Anybody else? I think that uh, just sitting up here listening to everything, we have the responsibility to the district and to our kids to get the best possible programs in place for learning, period. We also have to entrust that the people that we put in place to do the jobs that are being done in our district have our best interests and our children in mind. So with that being said, 
I think that you can call it micromanaging or whatever, but it, I don't think it's micromanaging. I think it's trusting the people that we put in place, our administration, our superintendent, and those things to get the best quality education out to our students. So with that being said. Um, well, I did have one last one. Um, and, and I agree on all those topics. For me, the, the committee, the committee um, situation and running things through committee, for me, is not a matter of micromanaging and that the committee is going to make a decision as to what it is more so that the committee and we can grasp and understand everything that's going on with the programming in our district so that we as a board have the ability to tell our story so that when people say, well, what are you guys doing, and we can say, well, we have this program going on up at the high school. We just implemented it this year, and it involves this and this and that. We got new curriculum, new this, and da da da. So that's what the committee does. It allows us to spend a lot more time than we can here, because you may be talking about one of these books for an hour or two at just at one committee meeting, getting to understand the one set of curriculum, and that's it as a board. You understand what I'm saying? So to me, it's not micromanagement. It's more like right. just getting a good feel for what's going on in our district so we can support the work that the administration is doing and be able to tell the story of what we're trying to do as a district to improve the education for our students. And, and I agree with that, but since I've been on the board, that's the reason why we get this yep. information ahead of time. Yep. So if we have any questions, we can yep. bring it to yep. the superintendent or the president, get this ironed yep. out before we get to this point in our meeting and, and and i remind everybody just like uh, miss rayford had a question that regarded the business manager and i said she's probably going to call you any board member up here should feel free to contact the superintendent and the superintendent can point them in the direction of the right person to contact to get their question answered exactly. at any time and, and, and if you can't talk to her personally right at that minute when you call her i am quite sure she will get back to you okay and do that feel free to do that anytime and quite often i would assume that You'll say, well, give Robert a call. Here's, here's his number and ask him the question yourself, you know. I mean, there's things where he may be better off answering the question than her because he knows the information may be better than she does because that's what he does. That's his job, you know. So I just want to encourage you guys. We can't get the information up here. I do think we need to explore a committee structure because we basically wiped it out. But I just and now want to say this Shirley one thing. I did, I'm, new to, I'm new to the board as well. And you're speaking of things that was done in January, and, and I was just in at that I time. Did. So I didn't know, I don't know all of this, mm -hmm. what, how is this is done. It's just that when I come in, I just have to say yes or no. And, and that's the part that I don't un, un, and understand. And we're going to get better on that, and we're going to address that later on, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can we please call a vote? Can we at least get the last question? Well, if we Ms. One Ms. Lakeisha Flowers oh. to answer about the timeline. Oh, the timeline. Yes. Go yeah, go ahead. Come forward. So if I'm recalling your question correctly, if materials are ordered following June. I'm sorry. Can you speak out? Sorry. Yes. Can you hear me now? Hear me? Yes. So if I'm recalling your question correctly, if we come back, you all come back after your June 26th meeting and the materials are ordered, will they be here in time for implementation at the beginning of the school year? And the answer to that is yes. Once we come back, just so you know, our delivery timelines currently in the month of June, we're at about a five to seven day um, delivery time from the time that the purchase order is received and processed. Once we come after July 1st, those timelines stretch out to about seven to 10 business days because we're having orders coming in throughout the country. So that kind of extends it, but again, seven to 10 business days. And then as we get into August, then that extends a bit more. But when we're speaking of June 26th, we're in that window of about seven to 10 business days with a purchase order being received by um, July 1st or in that time frame of just after the holiday. So we would be, you would be. <coughs> so that's, well, is that considering the uh, supply chain issues as well or is that not considering that? Do you have that problem? We don't have that problem. Okay. No, we've prepared for that in advance. So we do not. No. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
if I can add to some steps, just to understand the full process. So that's the process of the quote, um, you know, getting the order done and getting the materials on site. There's a lot of things that happen after that that, that you all may or may not realize. And that includes, um, first of all, obviously setting up training, but then inventorying everything that's shipped and then barcoding and we scan it in and out so we, we can um, be accountable for where all these materials are in the storage piece. So that's the physical piece. And then on the back side, there's the integration piece where um, we have to integrate the technology piece and set up online accounts. And our goal is to have our teachers trained when they come in for PD right on August 23rd, 24th, whatever that date is. And so, um, as you may remember, um, in the January implementation, which has gone very well, it, it was a very laid out plan, as this is, to make sure that um, when we bring something new to our teaching staff, that we have all the pieces in place. We want to be ready. We want to be confident. We want them to feel good about um, tackling a new resource because that you know, that takes some extra effort on our teaching staff. So we need to be sure that we're ready for that. We wanna make sure that we have stages throughout the course of the whole year and even into the second year we have in our long range plan to support those teachers and continually provide professional development and have that job embedded so that we have some trainers coming in and actually being in the classroom with our teachers and showing them um, not just sitting and getting sort of learning, although there'll be some of that, but some of it is really the implementation piece. So it's a very um, wide plan, if you will. It's, it, 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 it's quite widespread, but it's set up for success. And, and I just, I wanted to make sure, I've been working with Lisa, boy, for three, four months now on this and with this teaching staff and who were very much involved with the process, starting with all the teachers being surveyed um, and then the committees formed. So I feel really good about um, the planning and the organization um, that we have that we wanna move forward on. Now, if we, you know, if it, it doesn't go through tonight and goes in two weeks, we might have some bumps, but we are committed to making sure that our students have a quality resource when they return to school in 23, 24, because as Lisa will share, it's, there's an urgency. There's, there, there's, there's an urgency, and, and I, I won't steal your next slides. <laughs> but I just wanted to kind of give all of those pieces. We tried to put the highlights in there, um, in the slides, so that you could get a taste of what some, oh, I keep forgetting about that, sorry. Um, we, we tried in the slides to really put some of those highlights of the, of the program that our teachers liked, that our principals liked, that our staff, that our curriculum department like, that we think will benefit our students. It really just comes down to the learner and then how we can best utilize our staff and get them feeling confident with the material to deliver the instruction. I mean, that's just the end goal. So, okay, I'll step away. <laughs> okay. Mrs. Grunberg. Yes. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mrs. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Uh, Mr. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Rayford? No. Mrs. Richardson? Thank you. Okay. All right, so speaking of student achievement and the importance of that, uh, I'm now going to give a report on our benchmark assessment, which is the NWEA map growth, and this is uh, as required by law. Um, we, you've seen this slide before. Uh, when I was here mid-year, uh, these are our two, our two goal areas. Um, I won't read that slide to you, but it's basically our, our, our goal areas are we're reading and math uh, as measured by this benchmark assessment. And, um, you know, we were committed to showing growth in reading and math over the course of a year. Uh, and then it also states that all teachers will be using a variety of strategies to support meaningful progress towards mastery of these goals. Um, 
it all, there's, there's another caveat in there that, that furthermore, the results will be continuously discussed and analyzed by staff. And uh, we do that weekly in our PLC meetings uh, and data digs that each building holds after uh, each assessment cycle. So we're going to dig into the spring data now. So what, what I've brought for you this evening is looking at our fall to spring, um, our year at a glance, right? So the first slide here um, is, is our math data for kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, all grade levels except for one showed growth. Uh, which is good news. The blue bar on the graph uh, represents the observed growth for each grade level. The gold diamond uh, represents the grade level norms or the projected growth. Ideally, we'd like to surpass the diamonds, um, but you can see, especially in the areas of uh, the, the third, well, the third grade and, and the first grade even, we, um, as well as our 12th graders, you can see that, that they're, they're kind of hitting the mark. Um, if you could go to the next slide, and, and again, hitting the mark, I mean showing, meeting their growth goals, not necessarily grade level yet, but, but making growth towards those goals. The, for reading, um, the lower L's we see again are meeting those growth targets. Notice that we do have some weak areas in seventh grade and beyond, even areas where growth has receded um, since fall. So again, with speaking of urgency, again, we thank you for that, uh, that, that vote to adopt new materials. I think that is definitely a step in the right direction. This comes after, granted, this comes after a very lengthy assessment window, uh, especially with our eighth graders and our 11th graders. Um, data digs and, and coaches have said that it's quite possible that kids have just kind of run out of steam at this point with all the assessments that they were taking this spring, but um, it, it speaks to ur the urgency. Next slide. This graph shows fall to spring RIT scores um, by grade level. Again, I think you can see the nice gains at the elementary level. Um, and the, the, the thing that I think contributes to, to some of those gains are the renewed focus on the implementation and monitoring of those new curriculum pieces at the elementary level. As you know, I ready for math. Uh, we had some tier one literacy footprints um, our, our coaches were really working hard on, on some of those small group instruction pieces. The numbers in red would be where there was a, a, a flat growth from fall to spring or in some cases um, a decline. Next slide, I know you can't see that picture, that's even without my glasses, that looks, that looks horrible, but I just wanted to, to show you that as a sample of what will be included in the final report that's posted to our district's webpage under the transparency reporting link. Uh, you will see a breakdown by, um, by school, by, by the building RIT scores, the school's demographics and mode of instruction. Um, happily, the mode of instruction is the most remarkable change since I was last here in February. Uh, we have, of course, our students um, that were switched from hybrid to in-person learning since that last time. We do have still a, a few students at the high school who, who are um, still learning from home, but for the most part, K-12, all of our students are back face-to-face uh, -face in person. Demographic trends, there, there was nothing super remarkable other than um, if, you, if you were to, to look by building and, and look closely, um, there were some trends with math. Males tend to have higher NWA scores than females, grades K through three, and then the, the girls kind of sh shift in fourth grade. Sixth graders are, are girls kind of shifted to, and then it kind of it evens out uh, by the time they're in high school. There's alternately, by high school, our females are, are, are achieving at a higher rate than, than our males at that level. So hopefully, boys are gonna like my perspectives, right? That's our new, our new book. We're hoping that they have some, some pieces in there, right, Lakeisha? Okay, next page. Um, we also had some demographic, oh, I mentioned that. Things we currently have in place to address these gaps uh, would be the current Curriculum implementation of iReady, as I mentioned, literacy footprints for differentiated guided reading and small group instruction, K-5. Uh, ongoing training in the literacy learning modules through the MISD. Uh, we've had, we are, have been training staff kindergarten and first in grade 
first and second grade, excuse me, and our three five cohorts are going to begin this summer. Um, and those are best practices in, in literacy. Multi-tiered systems of support, tier two and three interventions that are delivered by uh, Title I interventionists and academic paraprofessionals. Um, so students are getting, in addition to their tier one courseware, they're getting, they're getting the, that additional support. We have instructional coaching cycles in, in reading and math. And then high dosage tutoring in math and reading for targeted students grades one through three. Uh, and at this point, I'd like to invite um, Julie Kaler up. She is Crescent Woods uh, instructional coach and our district's educator on loan from uh, through the MISD, and so, which means she's our district's literacy coach for those elementary buildings, K3. And she has helped coordinate some of the high dosage tutoring. So I'm going to have her talk about some of our high dosage tutoring data uh, for literacy, and then I'll finish with math, and then... And then we'll move on. Is Christy advancing the slide? Christy is advancing the slide. Okay. <laughs> so good evening again. High dosage tutoring. It's three days a week, Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. It took place in, for first, second, and third graders. I'm going to focus on literacy right now, and then I think Lisa's going to present math. So what you're looking at is an attendance pie graph and this shows February March and April the students came green is indicating students present 91 to 100 percent of the sessions the blue represents 71 percent to 90 percent of the sessions attended and orange represents 51 to 70 percent of the sessions attended and what we found with the orange was they were just special circumstances of students that were having special family emergencies one was illness that took them out of town it was just unfortunate circumstances and we did allow them to stay in the program because we felt that it was beyond the family's control we really encouraged at the start we sent home like contracts asking the parents to be committed grandparents to be committed to getting the students to school because a big part of high dosage tutoring and the success of the program is to attend and try and not miss. So um, now you're looking at just a little breakdown. It shows the first grade attendance, the second grade attendance, and the third grade attendance. And once again, uh, the green, blue, and orange stand for the percentage of sessions attended. Overall, the sessions were attended well. So we were pleased. So now you're looking at pre and post DRA data. What is DRA? DRA is a developmental reading assessment. This is an assessment that tests the student's reading proficiency. And what you're looking at is a blue bar and an orange bar. The orange bar stands for the pretest, and the blue bar stands for the post test. And this is kind of an overall, the, the top uh, two lines that you're looking at. This is showing the significant progress that was made on average. Students moved at least four levels. Some students advanced well more than that. So if you go to the next slide, it's going to show you that um, there were 10, there were 10 groups of students being tutored in literacy. And once again, the orange shows the pre-assessment and the blue shows the post-assessment, and we found that the students' reading levels moved significantly with this high-dosage tutoring going on. What was happening in high-dosage tutoring? It was small group reading instruction, guided reading. It was a component of um, about 15, 20 minutes of word study, a guided reading group where they sat with a little book at their level, and then a writing component that followed. The final slide that we're sharing with you is, so there's, there were two, two more assessments given, pre and post. Um, one was called the IDI, and that stands for Informal Decoding Inventory. And this assessment is used to identify the decoding skill deficits. And once again, the pre is in orange and the post is in blue. And the way this test works is it, it's given starting with the most basic word patterns. And as, 
as they take the test, if they pass the most basic level, then they move to the next level. And the next level, what are these levels? It starts with basic, CVC. We call those consonant, vowel consonant words. Then it moves to blends and digraphs. And then R were our vowels, like controlled R words, like O-R-A-R. -R. Then CVC, silent E words, and then eventually vowel teams. But you have to pass each level before you can advance on. So overall, this looked pretty good too. Most of our students um, showed real success with, with this program, um, or with this assessment, I should say. Finally, um, the FRI test, which was the final test that we're showing you, it was like a sight word vocabulary test, and our students really grew in this as well. Um, they're both really important assessments. We want their vocabulary to grow, but we're starting to really focus into on the way students attack words. We don't want it to just be a memorization thing. We want them to be able to look at the word patterns, look for the chunks inside the words to be able to decode words apart because that's what good readers do. Um, and with this Fry test, which was the sight word test, it was four lists that the students were given and they had to pass 80% of the list to go to the next list. It was kind of like the idea, you pass one level and then you get to move to the next and to the next. So overall, we saw some real growth with these students. Four DRA levels was, was the average, but like I said, there were many students that advanced more. And um, recently, we, we just started pulling this data because they just finished NWA, but we're noticing that these kids that were taking high dosage tutoring, that the NWA scores were going up for these kids as well. So um, it was money well spent. The teachers earned $40 an hour. That, that was pretty good pay. Um, and I think moving forward, the plan is to, although I won't be here and I'll be retired, the plan is, and Lisa's carrying on that torch, um, to start this earlier in the year. Like, get it out of the gate. We just sat down and we looked at all the students that um, have completed their assessments and we're already targeting students. Now we will get new students and students will leave and we'll revisit these lists, but we're already in preparation, hoping to kick this off hopefully in October. So um, it was my pleasure to be the high dosage coordinator, tutoring coordinator, so I thank you for that, Lisa. Um, and I just wanna say, um, as I took my bell, I wasn't really prepared to get up here and stand up and say anything, but um, it, it's been a great run. Um, it's 35 years in East Detroit, and um, most of those years were spent at Bellevue and Crescentwood teaching first and second grade. And um, it was a hard decision to make, and I, I'm excited for the future in chapter two with my husband and visiting our children who all live out of state but um, it's been a, a pleasure to be a part of this community in this district. So thank you. That was a little off topic, but I was caught off a little off guard. I wasn't really expecting to say anything. That's why I kind of took my bell and ran to the corner over there, but I, I felt like I wanted to mention something. So thank you, Lisa. She's been a great partner well, to you, work with. You saw me up here and it gave yeah, you bravery. It did, it gave me inspiration. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much, Julie. So math data, very quickly, I just have a couple of slides. Uh, the high dosage tutoring in uh, the area of math, we had three tutors, two at Bellevue, one at Crescentwood. We had 12 students who were working on their addition, subtraction, structuring numbers, uh, forward number word sequence, backward number word sequence, and numerical ID identification. Um, and our pre and post test data is seen here. So uh, again, just looking at the, the blue, which was the pretest, and the red, which was the post, you see that, that uh, our, our students made, made some good growth there. Um, the next slide shows the average change. Um, and what, what we see here is that over, a, they had up to 30 sessions, depending on attendance, though there was a correlation, as Julie spoke about students' uh, attendance and, and the amount of growth that they were able to make. But um, you see over grade level growth in three of the five areas there, and the other two are, are pretty darn close. So 
High dosage tutoring is something that we, we indeed want to keep doing. In fact, we want, would love to expand that. And we feel like with intentional planning and deliberate practice, uh, we're gonna reach our goals. Um, next steps for us here would be the curriculum adoption process uh, to purchase high quality curricular resources for ELA K-5 um, and implement newly adopt, uh, the newly adopted resources with Fidelity, high quality PD for administrators, teachers, and support staff, um, continue our high quality tier one, but also provide high quality tier three interventions such as the high dosage tutoring, monitor our, our progress towards goals at all levels during performance management, district turnaround networks, PLCs, et cetera. Um, our team is currently engaging in an assessment audit to inform our balanced assessment system and we're working with, uh, with, with staff at all levels to uh, to look at formative assessments and, and to really kind of get, get that shored up so that we know uh, what mastery looks like for our students and we can um, use those assessments to inform our next steps. And of course, developing our action plans based on our strategic planning goals and those continuous cycles of improvement. So I thank you kindly for your time this evening. Um, and I'm sorry it took so long. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Lots Petrella. of important info today. Thank you. Good evening. Um, our technology corner, Danny Latham. Uh, is requesting that the district uh, purchase six new Promethean boards. Um, we bought some earlier, I think it was six months or at for the beginning of the school year. Now we have more classrooms that are coming online. And so he would like to purchase six additional boards and install those six plus four that we had as spares. Pricing is per the Remsey cooperative bid uh, and cooperative bidding is allowable per our board policy. The cost of the Promethean, the six new boards plus installation of 10 boards is 30,051.83. And these will be paid for using ESSER three grant funds. Just a quick question. You said four, we have four spares and we're requesting six new ones, so a total of 10 Correct. new boards going in. And we'll, after this, we'll have one spare in case something happens. To the district. <coughs> OK, will that be suffice for the district, or do we need to order more spares? Uh, at this time, we think it suffices for the district. OK. What's the lifespan on those boards? You know, I, I don't know the answer to that. I can find that out for you. Um, With most of the technology components, we find that it's a three to five year life expectancy. It depends on the availability of the manufacturer to continue to update uh, the firmware and the software that goes when it speaks. Um, but like with a laptop device, you're looking at an average of three to five years. Um, again, it depends on uh, the amount of memory in the device and the ability of the firmware to be updated. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the six new ones Support. to be purchased. I only have one comment about them is these boards. I was in a first grade classroom. Uh, I don't know what that I had. Owned, I had to own up because I told them I'd pay for some pizzas for them and give them some books or something. So I was in this classroom, but I can tell you this. These first graders and their ability to use those boards, I was amazed. <laughs> the teachers were standing in the back of the room and asked the first grade student to do something on that board, and they walked up there like, whatever it's I, like. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it was an everyday thing to them, and I was like, holy cow, I am amazed. The, these boards are phenomenal. They really are uh, a drastic improvement over the last boards we had for sure. Absolutely. So, 
And it is unfortunate with technology that it does become outdated over a period of time. So we'll probably be looking at new boards somewhere down the line, I'm sure. But Anything I never thought we'd be replacing chalkboards so often. But Anything amazes. We, we crayola, crayola <laughs> baby, so everything was exciting. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it was, it was amazing. We okay, please call the vote. Mr. Williams, yes. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Rayford? Mrs. Richardson? Yes. And Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Okay, now we're looking at some asbestos abatement. Yes. Um, there's construction work that's going to occur at three buildings this summer, Bellevue, Crescentwood, and Forest Park Elementaries. And part of the work involves, like, removing existing doors. And, and uh, we have to, uh, there's potentially asbestos around door frames when they open it up so that will have to be abated uh, and, and uh, you know pass the environmental test and uh, two bids were received uh, they were only two hundred dollars apart which is a good thing and the low bidder was environmental maintenance engineers Inc and the, their bid was for hundred fifty eight thousand dollars and this would be paid for with ESSER three grant funds I got a question. Wasn't was this a part of the uh, original work that was uh, was supposed to be started last last summer, or is uh, this no, something this is, new? No, this is summer 2023 work. Okay. Yeah. But it's paid with. It's, by the yeah. Right. Principles. So yeah. So this, we can't do all the buildings at one time. Right. Because there's just limited resources and limited amount of time. So we're we're doing three at this time, and what involves like you're. This is like the, uh, where they're tearing out the walls and putting those little cubby lockers exactly. mm -hmm. and new casework. Okay. Um, so we need to pull out the old stuff, you know, all that behind the walls, material needs to be tested. Okay. And that's what this is for. Okay. Anybody? One. Is there a motion? Place forth a motion to uh, the recommendation for the vendor of uh, asbestos abatement for summer 2023 building improvements. Support. Any other questions or discussion? Please call the vote. Uh, Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Rayford? Mrs. Richardson. Yes. Motion carries. Next, we have human resources. Yes, please. Thank you. This evening, we're asking for the board's approval of the position of human resources director. Um, on April 21st, the executive cabinet team did an activity uh, called responsibility charting, where we took all of the job descriptions of the central office team and uh, went through and mapped the level of responsibility for the positions. Through doing that work, um, we will be making a change to the organizational structure of the central office at East Point Community Schools. Lori Rush has indicated that she uh, initially planned to retire. She has rescinded her retirement, uh, but she will still be moving on from East Point Community Schools. Instead, she is cautiously optimistic to support us uh, through the ISD instead. Um, with Ms. Rush leaving, it uh, allowed that executive director of student support services through the responsibility charting process, we realized that we didn't need to keep that at an executive level anymore. Um, instead, we noticed that we had, and with a strategic plan, we have an entire goal area in human resources. Our team is recommending this evening the addition of a human resources director. It does not add a position to central office. Instead, it, um, we take the executive director of student support services, and that will be a human resources director instead. Um, and then we will take the student support services, and we will be moving that under the supervision of the assistant superintendent. And that revision to that um, job description will come at a later time. But um, we started by bringing the athletic and activities director position to the Board of Education. Um, and this is the second position in the restructuring plan for the Board of Education this evening. 
Was there a motion to approve? Motion. Got a question. <laughs> Mrs. Good? Richardson, I'd like to meet them too. <laughs> Motion to approve the Human Resources Director position. Support. Any other questions? Discussion? Um, how closely are we adhering to the criteria that I saw listed in the packet? I know sometimes we end up having to fill a role and people don't necessarily meet all the criteria. I'm just asking the question. Yeah, it's a really good question, uh, board member, Trustee Rayford. Um, the job description has been made based on the responsibility charting process. So what the candidate would be responsible for leading. Um, here in East Point Community Schools, you know, um, we will have some criteria for the position, um, but we will have to look at the candidate pool um, there have been times we've decided not to fill a position and repost because in the first pool of candidates, we didn't get um, the credentials that we are looking for. Um, there are some credentials, such as a central office administrative certificate, that the MDE does allow someone three years to obtain that um, once they are already working. Um, but we would like to, uh, the job description will stay the job description. We'd like to post and begin that process um, and I'm cautiously optimistic that we will find um, someone who is passionate and interested in the work that we are doing here in East Point um, and um, who has the desire to grow into the job um, because just like with all of these positions, um, I can speak as a superintendent that I definitely have a lot to learn still about the role of the superintendent, um, but with the right mindset and the commitment to the work I do believe that um, we can grow and develop someone, but um, we have had um, some very good candidates recently for uh, two other positions that we had open, and I'm cautiously optimistic that our ideal human resources director is out there, um, and they just didn't know they wanted to work for us yet. <laughs> Anything else? Please call the vote. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Mrs. Richardson? Yes. Mrs. Rayford? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. <clears throat> and Mr. Grunberg? Yes. <clears throat> okay, next we have item D, Board of Education. I actually asked, asked that these uh, be added based upon the workshop that we had and the discussion we had regarding um, board policies, um, board operation manual, and that type of thing. Um, to get moving forward anyhow, at least, I thought it was important that we uh, begin with these two ad hoc committees because these are two um, things that have been um, shined a pretty nice sized light on lately, especially with uh, the two new board members we have and the orientation process that we have for our board members. And, and making sure that they are up to speed when they get up here at the table for, at day one so that they can do what they need to do. Um, so that's why I ask that these be added. Um, I would move that we form a Code of Ethics Ad Hoc Committee and a new Board Member Orientation Committee Ad Hoc as well. And I'm looking for somebody to support. Support. Now, if anybody has any questions or comments, feel free to, this is the time to bring it up, I guess you could say, before we actually vote as to establish these committees. Oh, you were talking about the ISD, what I brought up earlier? No, that would be something separate because that would be, these would be outside of that, but once we... Many of us took that class, hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, at least three or four of us, I would hope. We would be able to sit down and discuss as a whole board what committee structure we want going forward. Because MASB is going to present us with, you know, various, they have one they suggest, which I know is representative of four committees, that basically any function or any programming that goes through our district can actually run through one of those four committees. 
And I think if I remember correctly, I'm going to take it again because I had it, but it was a few years back. Um, and I think out of all the four of those committees, the president is only allowed to um, sit on one, I think, or chair one. I think it was sit on one. So the other committees are actually with the other members. So, But going forward, at least in the interim until we get that far, we need to start some of our work. And this would just be uh, the code of ethics and the new board member orientation would be just something ad hoc that they would do their work and bring something to the board as far as a proposal to establish as far as how we're going to operate as a board when it comes to code of ethics and when it comes to new member orientation. And then once we come up with our committee structure, we can roll all of that in within the committee structure once we decide on what we want. So that's what I was kind of looking for here to establish those and start working on those this summer. And I would fully anticipate uh, that those committees will work with administration, not to have administration tell them what to do because, but mainly because administration has can garner more resources than we can more rapidly than we can. So say, for instance, uh, somebody who was on the Code of Ethics Committee says, well, I want to see what other districts are doing for Code of Ethics. Superintendent can contact those other districts and get and see what their Code of Ethics policies are, get them to us, and then we can kind of look for them. Orientation procedures, <coughs> the same type of thing, okay? And as far as the committees and how the committees are run, um, that's kind of up to the chairs of the committees as to exactly how they're going to run them, meeting dates and stuff like that. They'll work on that with the other members of the committees to set up dates, times as to when they'll meet, peruse the information, decide what kind of direction they want to go in, reach some kind of consensus among the committee to bring something back to the board at some point in the future. Hopefully not too far down the line because I want us to keep moving. This uh, We've all been engaged in professional development this board, and I think we're at a knowledge level to where we can be a very high performing board and I think we need to take that next step so that's why I want to do this kind of work. When will you implement? Um, that will actually be up to the committee chairs. I would assume they, they would get going pretty soon. What is your time frame for completion? Mm. Mm. Are, are we hoping to have this by November, October, right. September? Um, that will give my administrative team a better idea, well, the administrative team of myself and Wendy, um, how much time. I think we should build them today, tonight. You're thinking, like, you, Ed, we'd like to have the work done by October? October? At least had a committee. Well, at least that's an optimistic. By October? If we take the course, the course you're planning on. The course is this summer. Yeah. August, we have September, and by October, we should be up and running. <clears throat> but I'm just saying, you should be able to have, you could have meetings as soon as possible, really. Oh, yeah. Right. As right. soon as you can start requesting information, start digesting. A committee chair may say, hey, I want to meet every couple of weeks. Um, and once again, it gets into a posting issue. Um, you know, you do, have to comp you do have to post committee meetings as well. And so those committee meetings have to be posted a certain amount of, time frame ahead of time um, and also I would include because in the past when we did committees uh, there's never three more more than three people assigned a committee so therefore it's not a quorum right right but I think we use we didn't start doing it but it was suggested by MASB you may want to put on the posting that there may be a quorum of the board there just because of the fact that if a board member does show up another fourth one and wants to speak and say something legally they can do so because otherwise, if you have a quorum there and it's not accounted for being a quorum, you can't act as a quorum. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you put that on there that there could be a quorum, then that means all seven board members, if they showed up, could participate. Okay. I have a question before we vote on this about uh, the MS, MASB workshop. Uh, what was that cost? Does anybody know? Well, oh, to, to do a workshop? Mm -hmm. With MASB? Well, no. Oh, the, the last the workshop last that we did? Yeah. I mean, you can get with Robert and Christina. Okay. Exactly what the, I was just know. curious as to what that was. But as far as, as far as the classes, if we did a workshop, it wouldn't be another workshop with MASB. I'm suggesting we take the class and we do our own workshop after. And I, get, I guess what that. we want to do. I'm just, you understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm being very money conscious here. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. 
So do you build start when when do you start uh, implementing again the committees? I would say as soon as possible. If we vote on it tonight. But as soon as as soon as we vote on it now. Yeah. Uh, if we vote on it tonight, if approved, then those committees can start up uh, as soon as they want to get going. So you want to vote yeah. on the committees and to formation, the committees. and then we'll follow policy as far as placing members on those committees. Okay. So the motion that you made um, was the formation of the Code of Ethics Committee and the new board member onboarding committee. Right. Yes. Um, and it was supported by Robert Roscoe. Yep. Yes. And those are ad hoc committees. They're not standing committees. They don't go on forever. Until the work is done, once the work is done and they're ready to present something to the board, they will present something to the board, and then that committee is dissolved at that point. And will those committees run alongside the strategic plan? Yes. Well, you, should, you'll have to work with that on administration okay. to make sure that they coordinate, I'm sure. Okay. Anything else? Okay, please call the vote. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Mrs. Richardson? Yes. Mrs. Rayford? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Did you already call me? Yes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I was first. I was first. <laughs> wow, that was a long time ago, it seems. <laughs> Anyways, um, finally, before we adjourn, uh, according to board policy, it is incumbent upon the board president to actually make committee assignments. So I've been giving some of this, uh, some thought to this prior to this in anticipation that if it did pass as to who I would want to place on what committees. And so on the new board member onboarding committee, I would like uh, Mr. Williams to chair that committee. And I would like Ms. Richardson and Ms. Gruenberg to be members on that committee as well. Which committee is that? That would be the new board member onboarding committee. Is the is the chair? Ed will chair. And Mr. Williams would chair. Okay. That's Williams as the chair. Mm -hmm. And then Richardson and Gruenberg as committee members for the onboarding committee? Yep. Okay. And then for the Code of Ethics Committee, I would like Dr. Early to chair that. And myself and Mr. Roscoe will be the other committee members. Now, if any of those committee members because I did not discuss it with any of these committee members that I just brought up. I didn't discuss it with any of you folks today. If any of you have an issue with that particular committee, please get back to me and I will do some reassigning if I have to. There it is. Who's the chair? You're everybody got that? You got all your notes, everybody? The chair She's and the chair. myself and Doc, and not Dr. Roscoe, myself and Robert Roscoe, Mr. Roscoe, so will be the other committee member. Thank you. There we go. Okay, anything else? Okay, meeting adjourned.